Hey everybody, welcome to my very basic guide. In this episode, we'll learn about how climate change is actually great for the environment and why certain tree-hugging druids are all in on this hot new trend of burning everything down in the name of promoting growth through destruction. If you decide to join these trailblazers on their journey of playing with fire, then you might even get a flying pet made of flames to warm your home when the energy bill is too high. We are of course talking about the Circle of Wildfire, a druid subclass that was introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Other than inspiring the morally conscious pyromaniacs of D&D society, the Circle of Wildfire is really unique as a subclass that gives the player a good balance of damage dealing capabilities and more traditional support style casting abilities that are more commonplace for druids. It is also the first druid subclass to have a dedicated combat companion built in as an eye-catching mainline feature rather than as a summoner archetype. Depending on your campaign setting, you might run into some trouble with fire resistant and fire immune enemies, so it probably would be prudent to explore spell options that are not always thematically aligned. But again, the Circle of Wildfire offers pretty good support oriented abilities, so you don't necessarily have to be the one pumping out the damage numbers if your skill set can be better allocated. Even your small fire elemental friend has supportive actions that it can make use of if its raw damage is not helpful at the moment. The versatility of being a wildfire druid is one of its strongest points, and one of the main factors that feed into this idea is a subclass of spell list that it receives at level 2. The Circle of Wildfire Spells feature is a set of spells that unlock as you level up, and all of the spells that you gain from this feature will always be available for you to cast, but they do not count against the number of spells you can normally prepare each day as a druid, and all of the spells will be considered a druid spell for you to cast. Interestingly, as a piece of default fluff that you can choose to incorporate, the Wildfire Druid subclass spells that you gain are a direct result of the bond with your Fire Spirit. So it's actually your toasty friend that is responsible for blessing you with free spell options, and I think that's just pretty cool. Starting off at 2nd level, the Wildfire Druids get their green thumbs on the 1st level spells, Burning Hands and Cure Wounds. Burning Hands is a classic 1st level AoE spell that does some pretty serious damage early on, and is of course aesthetically appropriate to be received as a Wildfire Druid. Cure Wounds is also a time-honored healing spell, although the Druid already has this in their normal spell list, and it does receive competition from Healing Word, which is usually the better choice for in-combat healing. But having Cure Wounds that doesn't cost you a preparation slot for out-of-combat healing is still really nice to have. Arriving at level 3, you actually get two more Wildfire Circle spells in the form of Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray. Both are decent damage dealing second level fire spells. Flaming Sphere is perhaps the more questionable one since druids have a lot of pretty decent concentration spells already that Flaming Sphere has to compete with, such as Entangle and Spike Growth. It often does relegate Flaming Sphere to only be utilized in tight spaces with lots of enemies nearby in order to make good use of its continuous area effect damage. Scorching Ray on the other hand is a staple damage dealing burst spell that is pretty great in its damage output for just a second level spell slot, as long as you land all three individual rays that is. As a druid, it's safe to say that you would probably want to max out your wisdom score as soon as possible, especially since wisdom saving throws are one of the more common things you have to roll for, and that bodes well with Scorching Ray's ability to consistently surpass enemy armor class. Getting to level 5 grants the druid to 3rd level spells in Plant Growth and Revivify. Plant Growth is always an interesting druid spell to have, as it does provide some really cool terrain shaping abilities from a 3rd level spell that does not cost concentration. It also can stack with other crowd controlling spells that apply difficult terrain, since Plant Growth is its own unique terrain type that costs 4 feet of movement for every 1 feet of a creature moves. However, it is extremely situational since it relies on regular plants actually existing in the area that the spell is cast on for it to work. So if you're fighting on urban streets or deep in rock caves, there might not be a good usage of plant growth, which does suck. The other spell, however, is pretty good to have always prepared, and its name is Revivify. Getting the ability to revive a dead ally is potentially campaign changing, and having it as a druid is a pretty good feeling to know that you are not outclassed by clerics when it comes to keeping your teammates out of the compost bin. Making your way to level 7 gives you two more support oriented 4th level spells in the form of Aura of Life and Fire Shield. Both are defensive spells that definitely have their niches, but are for the most part on the situational side of things. Aura of Life is great against very specific enemies, particularly undead that likes necrotic damage and maximum hit point draining abilities, but against most other enemy types, it probably will struggle a lot against other 4th level spells or other concentration spells, unless your adventuring party routinely gets wiped out, and the ability to bounce back up from death saving throws every turn is in high demand. But I suppose having Aura of Life in your back pocket is always reassuring if that scenario were to occur. Fire Shield is, again, another really thematic spell to have, but unfortunately you probably won't make much use of it as a druid since you probably don't want to get hit by melee attacks that much and you function better as a backline caster concentrating on various spells rather than a funky off tank. Finally, reaching 9th level as a heat loving druid gives you access to the last tier of free spells from the Circle of Wildfire feature, Flame Strike and Mass Cure Wounds. 
Flame Strike is like a poor man's fireball, and unfortunately the Wildfire Druid is the prime recipient for a spell like this, since you don't get access to fireball. Flame Strike for a 5th level damage dealing spell is at its best when fighting both ground and aerial enemies stacked on top of one of another, but more often than not, you're probably just going to use this as a more expensive fireball. But you know what, it's better than nothing, and Flame Strike does have decent damage scaling when casted using higher level spell slots. Mass Cure Wounds is the other 5th level spell, and it's quite nice to be getting as a spell that you will always have prepared. It might not be your go-to healing spell for every adventure, but instantaneously healing up to 6 creatures, including your Wildfire Spirit and yourself, is a really handy option to potentially shift a losing battle into a really advantageous position. And that's basically my summary for all of the subclass specific spells that the Circle of Wildfire gives to a druid. And I think overall they do a pretty good job of not only pushing the visual feel of a wildfire druid, but also the spells overall are quite nice to have, always ready for you to use, and the spells not costing you your precious preparation slots allows for a full caster to really get to pick and choose the best spells for the right situation. The other feature that you get right out of the gates of level 2 is Summon Wildfire Spirit, which provides you with your small sizzling friend. You summon the spirit by using one of your two wild shape charges with an action, and it appears within 30 feet of you. Your fiery spirit also gets a dramatic entrance with every creature within 10 feet getting blasted by 2d6 fire damage if they fail a dexterity saving throw against the druid's spell save DC, which is really interesting as you basically have a tiny firebomb you can just throw out when starting combat. After the incendiary explosive goes off, you get a pal that continues doing terrible things to creatures at your beck and call. Your Combustible Compadre is a small size elemental that has an armor class of 13, with hit points that are equal to 5 times your druid level plus 5. So it has a rather flimsy body to work with, but the Burning Spirit does have the natural ability to fly for 30 feet on its turn, which helps a lot in trying to preserve its life. It can also hover, so if it ever loses movement, it can just float there lighting up the sky like a lantern. As you may imagine, the small fire elemental also has immunity to the fire damage type, and also because it's a primal ball of red-hot flames, it is also immune to from the charmed, frightened, grappled, prone, and restrained conditions. Your carbon dioxide producing pet will always take its turn immediately after yours, with its default mode being the dodge action if the druid didn't command it to do anything else. As for the Wildfire Spirit's unique actions that the Druid can command it to do using your bonus action, there are two options. One is a standard range attack that will be the go-to option for damage output, and the other is an interesting teleportation ability that can get your party members out of tight spots while leaving behind a tiny firebomb. Flame Seed is the regular attack of the Wildfire Spirit that essentially acts as a spell attack with a range of 60 feet. If it hits, then it deals 1d6 plus the Druid's proficiency bonus and fire damage. This is pretty decent as a Wildfire Spirit is a rather fragile sidekick with only 13 AC, so constantly being able to pepper the enemy with strafing fire shots at a safe distance away in the air is a tried and true method of staying alive. The other special action the Wildfire Spirit can take is Fiery Teleportation, where every willing creature within 5 feet of the spirit gets to teleport together up to a distance of 15 feet, where there is unoccupied space for all of you. Each creature 5 feet from the spot that the spirit left behind will have to make a dexterity saving throw against the druid spell save DC or take 1d6 plus the proficiency bonus of that Wildfire Druid in fire damage. Being able to outmaneuver and flank enemies by suddenly getting into better positions while also doing a bit of chip damage here and there is definitely a pretty great ability that costs only a bonus action from the druid. Even though the teleportation range is pretty small, being able to allow your allies to escape from melee opportunity attacks and grapples can be absolutely life-saving depending on this enemy and also of the terrain. Your fiery companion only lasts for one hour, or if it loses all of its hit points, but the two uses of the wild shape feature is easily replenishable on a short or long rest, allowing the wildfire spirit to be readily available throughout most of the adventuring day. Hopefully Making your way to level 6, you and your little inferno are growing a lot stronger together, and this manifests in the feature Enhanced Bond. With the power of friendship glowing brightly, the druid's fire damage or healing rolls from the spells you cast gain a bonus 1d8 to 1 damage roll or 1 healing roll if your wildfire spirit is currently summoned. This is a pretty big boon since adding 1d8 to a lot of spells is essentially the same as upcasting by one level, and being able to continuously gain this benefit for a 1 hour duration is a lot of value added to each of your spell casts that does fire damage or can restore hit points. There's also a second part to enhance bond that is also pretty great, which allows any spell that the druid is casting to originate from the wildfire spirit instead of the druid's body if the spell has a range other than self. This is quite interesting and makes for some really intense strategizing of proper positioning for your spirit in order to get better angles to attack enemies from since your wildfire spirit only moves after the druid's turn. You have to make sure that you end your spirit's turn in range of enemies while keeping it out of harm's way, which is tricky but a very compelling thought exercise. Arriving at level 10 gives the Wildfire Druid the ability to recycle the spirits of the dead and use their corpses in more meaningful ways, with the feature Cauterizing Flames. After turning your foes into little more than ash and dust, any creature that is small, sized, or larger that dies within 30 feet of the Druid or Wildfire Spirit will produce a spectral flame, dancing on the dead body it sprung from, lasting for one minute. 
If a creature walks into the spectral flame, then this allows the druid to use a reaction to extinguish the spectral flame and either heal or do damage to them. The cauterizing flames can either heal or do fire damage equal to 2d10 plus the wisdom modifier of the druid, and the reaction ability can only be used a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and then you can regain all of your uses after a long rest. This is another really unique ability, especially since it sort of creates a battlefield filled with landmines if hordes of enemies are getting slain every round. It will make hostile creatures think twice before stomping on the bodies of their friends if they are smart enough to be weirded out by the spectral flames on their dead bodies. It also is a fancy way of turning opponents into healing potions, since 2d10 plus wisdom modifier is quite a sizable heal, especially on a reaction. It can also open up engaging ways to play with the battlefield of corpses by shoving, dragging, or repositioning enemies onto your cauterizing flames and then melting their skin. This also combos well with the wildfire spirit's fiery teleportation action, instantly moving allies on top of healing spots. Being able to have the versatility of healing or damage is very nice, and very handy in almost all combat scenarios. If you ever doubted the efficacy of the power of friendship, then look no further than the Wildfire Druid's capstone feature, at level 14 known as Blazing Revival. This is a self-resurrection ability for when the Druid falls unconscious by having their hit points drop to zero. They now have the ability to let their Wildfire Spirit take the fall and get revived like a phoenix from the ashes. You can only activate Blazing Revival if your spirit was summoned before your body hit the floor, and if the spirit was within 120 feet of you when you got smacked down. This renewal of your own life force is unfortunately at the expense of your Fire Elemental Pet, as the Wildfire Spirit is instantly sent to the Shadow Realm by dropping to zero hit points and being snuffed out. On the plus side, the druid actually regains half of their hit points, and they don't even need to waste half their movement to get back up, as the Blazing Revival feature gets you back up on your feet for free. You can only use Blazing Revival once and regain the feature on a long rest. This is a fairly incredible final feature to be receiving, as it essentially gives the druid a really powerful safety net that is easily replenishable in the form of sacrificing your own wildfire spirit. It might hurt to put the little guy down, but it is absolutely worth it to save yourself, as a wildfire druid has two charges of wild shape, so after you get back up, you can just plop out another one, and then replenish all your wild shapes on short rests. Being able to escape the jaws of death once per day is absolutely an ace up your sleeve, and it allows for a certain level of comfort when going in for a fresh day of adventuring, that you alone have the ability to always run away if the going gets rough to maybe fight another day. And that about does it for this very basic guide on the Circle of Wildfire Druid as presented in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. My closing thoughts on the subclass of the Druid is that it is a genuinely unique take on the combat pet subclasses that we see crop up now and then, with a heavier emphasis on both units working in tandem with one another to set up the battlefield in a way that helps out the rest of the team, with the adaptability to switch between blasting people with fire or helping out your party, with a pretty impressive suite of healing capabilities or even the ability to reposition over extended allies. Happy New Year's everybody, I trust that the festivities were relaxing, and once again, thank you guys so much for all the support you've shown me in my videos. Here's to another great year, and as always, I hope that anyone who watches my stuff enjoys what I create as much as I enjoyed creating in the first place. I'll see you guys next time, until then, goodbye for now.